time was known as the Bearwood Run and consisted of some 31,000 acres. In fact, the Bearwood Station still uh, extends to about 16,000 acres today. Incidentally, on the other side of the river, Otago Museum had 12,000 acres of government land in down to them. This land, of course, would have been leased out to farming interest. A Bearwood Run certainly was, and the revenue from those leases would have provided a good income for those institutions. Need to be quick to get the shot. Eden. During this trip we will remain within the boundaries of the city of Dunedin, we're the second largest city in the country, one of the largest cities in the world. Of course most of our territory is farmland, about 95% farmland.
When I was travelling through the site of the Little Mount Allen Railway Station, back in the 1950s when the Mount, uh, James family man, uh, managed the Mount John Sheep Station up here on the left hand side, they did not have a wheeled vehicle on their property. So war bales, which have been signed to the war stores in Dunedin, were brought down to the station, five at a time, on a sledge, which was towed along by a couple of horses. The war bales were stockpiled by the side of the track and finally loaded onto a train while the train waited. Mrs James took their two young children into town for shopping, they were transported down to the station in a similar fashion. A couple of apple boxes were nailed to the sledge, each child was placed into an apple box, and the children were sledged down to the station to catch the train. In 1980, a massive rainstorm flooded the Tyre River. This is the great flood of 1980. The flood also uh, flooded the Tyre Plain and also the International Airport at Mamona. But to indicate how high the river was flowing here at Mount Allen, shortly on the right hand side, just close to the track, you see a couple of ex railway houses. The first house, the lower house, was completely submerged, second house almost. On the other side of the river we see a magnificent stand of native Kanuka trees. A Kanuka is regarded as a scrub in its juvenile form and left alone will form into a forest canopy. The tree has a small white flower which is very popular with our nectar loving native birds such as the tui and the bellbird. A Kanuka has a smaller cousin called Manuka, sometimes called a tea tree because the early settlers used to boil up the leaves to make billy tea. Both trees produce a distinctive flavoured honey. Manuka leaves also produce aromatherapy oils. Some of its honey has antibacterial healing properties. to climb through the Silver Peaks Hills. It'll be the last we see of the Tari River as it weeds its way south. She finally enters the Pacific Ocean some 30 kilometres south of me. Also means we're two minutes from the Wingitui Viaduct. Opportunity for a photograph as the train swings right onto the viaduct. also goes to the Cadbury's Chocolate Factory in Dunedin. Across on the other side of the Tyra Plain, we see the township of Mosgiel, population 10,000. Mosgiel is a service centre for the Tyra Plains and the surrounding hill country. It's about a 15 minutes drive from Dunedin. Above Mosgiel we see Saddle Hill. 
easily recognised and as described by Captain James Cook in 1770 as he sailed along the coastal side of it from the sea.